All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to do a little bit of practice with the chain rule, which says that the derivative of f of g with respect to x, it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And the problems I'll do, they're pretty standard, so not too crazy. If you want to see some crazier problems, they're on another video. And so let's just start. So first problem is, let's calculate the derivative of sine of e to the x plus e of sine of x with respect to x. And notice all that it is, it's the derivative of this plus the derivative of that. And remember to use the chain rule, you first differentiate the outside function. So here the derivative of sine is cosine. But not cosine of x, but cosine of the inside function, which is e to the x. times the derivative of the inside function, which becomes the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. So that's one part. The other part here, you again differentiate the outside function, which here is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But again, e of the inside function, which is sine of x, times the derivative of the inside function, which becomes cosine of x. Very good. So again, this example was meant to emphasize that the inside function and the outside function, they're different. Um, so don't confuse them. The next one is kind of a reminder that even though you're probably addicted with the chain rule by now, uh, you should not forget the other differentiation laws. So let's do the following. The derivative of x squared plus 1 q times x squared plus 2 to the sixth. Okay, and what would you like to do is, it's a product of two functions. So let's use the product rule. And so what you have to do is first differentiate this function, for which we need to use the chain rule, because this is x squared plus 1 cubed. So we first differentiate the outside function, which becomes 3 blah blah squared. So, but the inside is x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. But remember, this part is like f prime. And to you apply the product rule, you need to do f prime g plus f g prime. So don't forget about this part. So times x squared plus 2 to the 6th power. And then you do f times g prime. So x squared plus 1 cubed times the derivative of this one for which we use the product rule. I mean, sorry, the chain rule. 6 power. And so to differentiate that, you get 6 times something to the 5th power. So x squared plus 2 the fifth power times the derivative of that which is 2x and then if you want you can simplify this a little bit I believe this becomes 6x times x squared plus 1 squared times x squared plus 2 to the 6 plus I believe 12x times x squared plus 1 cubed times x squared plus 2 to the fifth. And if you want, you can even factor out like x squared plus 1 squared and x squared plus 2 to the fifth. But I think for purposes of this problem, this is enough. All 
Okay, now let's do the following one. Because we've done the product rule, now let's do a quotient rule example. This one, let me just uh, make sure I have it. So cosine of square root of one plus, let's see, e to the two x, I believe, over one minus e to the two x prime. This one is quite ridiculous because you have a lot of nested functions, but believe in yourself, okay, or believe in the Chen Lu. So now, first, you differentiate the outside function for which you get minus sine of square root of 1 plus e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x times the derivative of this. And if you want to do the derivative of that, again, outside function, inside function, the outside function is the square root part. And remember, the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. So this becomes 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x. And now times the derivative of the inside, 1 plus e to the 2x. 1 minus e to the 2x prime. Now, this is a quotient of two things, so you have to use a quotient rule. But before we move on, just a small parenthesis, what's the derivative of e to the 2x? Well, you apply the chain rule and you get e to the 2x times the inside function, which is 2. And we'll need this here. So we get, again, minus sine of square root of 1 plus e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x times, if you want, 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x. Remember, f over g prime, you first differentiate f, so f prime, and the derivative of 1 plus e to the 2x becomes 0 plus 2e to the 2x, so 2e to the 2x, times g, 1 minus e to the 2x, minus f times g prime, 1 plus e to the 2x, and then the derivative of that, which becomes minus 2e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x squared. And notice the numerator, we can clean this up a little bit. I actually believe it simplifies quite nicely. Let me check. So, the stuff in boxes. That becomes 2e to the 2x minus 2e to the 4x. Multiply that out. And then minus minus, which becomes plus. So plus 2e to the 2x. And then, um, let's see, uh, plus uh, 2e to the 4x. And notice, two terms here cancel out. And what you're left with is 4e to the 2x. All right, and now let's, we can simplify this just a little bit more. I know, it got kind of crazy very quickly, but that's the thing with the chain rule problems. They just become very nested. So then what we get is minus sine of square root of 1 plus e to the 2x over 1 minus e to the 2x. This thing, you can kind of flip it upside down. So what you get is, if you want, square root of 1 minus e to the 2x 
over square root of 1 plus e to the 2x. And again, with the factor of 2. And then 4 e to the 2x over uh, 1 minus e to the 2x squared. And the nice thing is, this factor of 4 kind of cancels out like this. Becomes 2. And this square root, we can do a little bit more to that. This becomes square root is the same as something to the 1 half, which simplifies with this one to become 3 halves. So what you end up with is minus 2 e to the 2x sine of square root of this, 1 plus e to the 2x, over 1 minus e to the 2x. And I believe, so 1 over square root of 1 plus e to the 2x, and 1 over 1 minus e to the 2x, and then 2 to the 3 halves. <laughs> yes. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, I think that's correct. Mm. So that is that crazy derivative. Uh, I promise the other problems won't be as crazy. But again, just to remind you how to do nested um, derivatives and to remind you of the quotient rule. And now problem 4 out of 5. It's, it's very nice. Square root of x plus square root of x plus square root of x prime. Again, a nested thing, but not too bad. So, you first take the derivative of this first square root. And so what you get is 1 over 2 square root of x plus square root of x plus square root of x times the derivative of the inside, which is x plus square root of x plus square root of x. So this becomes 1 plus, or maybe let me um, make this a bit slower. So x plus square root of x plus square root of x prime. So 1 over 2 square root of x plus square root of x plus square root of x. Okay, derivative of x is 1. And now the derivative, you do another square root. So use the Chen Lu again. Which becomes 1 plus 2 square root of x plus square root of x. And then times the derivative of this inside, which is not too bad. So 1 plus 1 over 2 square root of x. And there you go, and it makes sense because you see you have three square roots, so you should have three instances of 1 over 2 square root of something. Okay, let me make this prettier like that. And last but not least, the nice thing is with the chain rule, we can differentiate even more complicated functions. So, oh, I'm saying um, functions that we didn't know how to differentiate before, like 2 to the x. Because notice, 2, it's the same thing as e of ln of 2 to the x. Again, we want to differentiate this. And that's the same as e of ln of 2x prime. And first, you differentiate the e. So e of ln of 2x. And then times the derivative of that. But this is just a constant times x. So the derivative is ln of 2. And this thing, again, going backwards, it's nothing else than 2 to the x times ln of 2. And in fact, there was nothing special about the number 2. You could have it with any positive number. So just know, in general, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln of a. And that's for positive a. 
And in fact, later we'll see we'll be able to get even crazier derivatives um, like arc sine, arc cosine, or anything else. All right, I hope you like this little practice with the chain rule. If you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.